one. Hello and welcoming, welcome to this opening session, Yes3D, Yes Lab, and FAPES Universal Projects. I'm Ana Sevilla Pavon from the Department of English and German Philology in the Yulma Research Institute at the University of Valencia in Spain. And I'm Kira Finardi from the Federal University of Espírito Santo in Brazil, and we're very happy to be with you today. Thank you very much for taking part in this double event. Uh, first of all, we have a webinar on virtual reality and languages learning. And this uh, is going to be preceded by the 2022 International Research Methods in Language and Linguistics webinar. Uh, the second of, of the two, the International Research Methods webinar will be held synchronously, whereas the Virtual Reality and Languages Learning webinar will be held asynchronously on our YouTube channel. Uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors, Generalitat Valenciana for funding the YES3D project, UV and Prem from the University of Valencia for funding the YES Lab project, and last but not least, FAPES for funding the FAPES Universal project, as well as Santander Universidades, Universidades uh, which uh, has supported uh, the YES Lab project. Next. The first event, as I said earlier, is going to be the 2021 Research Methods webinar, and we have the great pleasure of welcoming the following guest speakers. Ángel Almela from the University of Murcia in Spain, Ana Nicolao from Cyprus University of Technology, and Kiria Finaggi from Federal University of Espírito Santo in Brazil. This is an all online event, and all you need to do is click on the link and, and join us in order to be able to attend the talks live. If you don't manage to do so, don't worry, because we'll record the talks and we will make them available in our YouTube channel. Next. Here's the program for this first part of the, of the double event, the first webinar. We're going to start uh, with the opening, followed by Angel Almela's talk on quantitative methods research in language and linguistics and SPSS, an introduction. This, um, this presentation will be followed by Angel Almela's talk on uh, hands-on quantitative methods. And then we'll have our next uh, speaker, uh, Kiria Finargi, as well as Anna Nicolau, who's go who are going to tell us about um, qualitative methods. And uh, in the case of Kiria Finardi, mixed methods research in language and linguistics with an introduction and a practical example. Next, please. Uh, this event, uh, the second one, is going to be Virtual Reality and Languages Learning ES3G webinar. It's going to be held on November 9th, but since it's asynchronous, you can join us whenever it is more convenient with you. Uh, all you need to do is click on the YouTube channel and the, the link to the YouTube channel, and you'll find all the presentations dealing with topics such as entrepreneurship, innovation and internationalization in higher education, informal learning through virtual exchanges, virtual reality, digital technologies in ELT education, languages and business connectivities, impacts of the pandemic in education, and many more. Next. In this webinar, we'll have uh, speakers from uh, different countries, uh, such as Brazil, uh, Austria, Italy, Belgium, Spain, uh, to name a few, and we'll have the honor of uh, listening to Dr. Martin Volk, who's going to be our guest speaker for the closing, and he's joining us from the University of Ghent in Belgium. Next. Uh, next. Um, let me start off by telling you a little bit about uh, the YES Lab project that is uh, funded by UV and Pren and Santander Universitas. Um, and it's uh, currently being completed at the University of Valencia in collaboration with other universities worldwide. Uh, we'd like to, um, to develop uh, innovation and research around social entrepreneurship. Uh, and that's why we have partnered up with Entrepreneurship Campus UV and Prince and their universities, and we've received training at the uh, SCT, uh, SCET Center uh, at the University of California at Berkeley. That, had been, that has been our first step, and I'm going to tell you a bit more about what's coming next. Next. Our general goals are to foster innovation and social entrepreneurship among lecturers and students, uh, so the whole academic community, and to provide students with linguistic support so as to prepare them to successfully access international and intercultural work environments by means of the promotion of 21st century skills. These include social entrepreneurship, linguistic and communication skills, 
intercultural interpersonal competences, as well as creativity. Next. Our specific goals are to establish a service, the Youth Entrepreneurship Lab, to provide the academic community with, first of all, support materials and events in terms of linguistic and communication competencies with re regards to different aspects uh, connected to social entrepreneurship, such as multimedia, learning objects for training, workshops, consultancy and meetings with students and lecturers uh, so that we can support them while they're working in their entrepreneurial initiatives. And second, uh, immerse, immersion in real life professional, intercultural and international environments by means of participating in virtual exchanges in, in different virtual worlds. Um, at the moment, we are using spatial. We also want to determine the linguistic and communicative needs of the academic community with regard to social entrepreneurship so as to be able to, to better cater to, to their needs, interests, preferences, etc. And we want to analyze how the participation in the Yes Lab activities can boost languages for specific purposes learning at the whole university in all degrees. Next. Our research topics include the development of language and intercultural skills from a cognitive standpoint through the creation of avatars in light of the body-mind continuum that the paradigm of inaction highlights and the role of emotions in socially immersive experiences. We also want to verify the extent to which 3D virtual reality simulations through virtual exchange can supplement or even replace real and professional simulations and situations so as to prepare students for interacting and communicating in international and intercultural professional settings. This is especially relevant uh, nowadays with the current pandemic situation and all of the difficulties that our, our students are currently experiencing because it's hard for them to access companies in order to, to conduct, well, to, to complete their internships and, and trainings in, in those companies. Uh, last but not, least, but not least, we want to examine the possible emergence of a cross-border community of practice, and that's why we are collaborating at an international level. Next. The teaching and learning methodological approaches that we, we are currently following are very, very varied and multifaceted. Uh, we are covering simulations, professional learning and training, transversal competences, SDGs, collaborative learning, PBL, mentoring and peer learning, as well as problem-based learning. Next. Uh, here's a screenshot of one of those simulations that we've conducted uh, on spatial. Uh, you can see that, uh, well, by wearing the Oculus uh, headsets, we've been able to access spatial and uh, conduct different uh, kinds of simulations of uh, a business fair in which students need to deliver their, their business or elevator pitches, uh, meetings, um, different kinds of contexts, in this case, uh, for, with business studies, but we are planning to expand also to different degrees that include um, medical sciences, as well as uh, translation, communication, and many other. Next. Our methodology is based on the design-based uh, research paradigm. Uh, we are implementing this project in several iterative cycles of design, implementation, analysis, and redesign. And uh, with this, we intend to uh, foster lifelong learning, continuous improvement of our project, as well as catering to participants' uh, ever-changing dynamic needs, preferences, readjusting goals according to the academic community and society in order to ensure the relevance and sustainability of our project. Next. Uh, we're following a mixed methods approach uh, with data collection from both quantitative and qualitative sources. Uh, our instruments are very varied and include questionnaires, reflective essays written by students, proposals for addressing communicative issues connected to social entrepreneurship and intercultural communication, focus group interviews, direct observation, multimodal discourse analysis based on interactions and collaborative work in different platforms, as well as well the different kinds of data that we are collecting uh, from uh, well those uh, platforms, Moodle, Padlet, Google Docs, etc., in which uh, students are sharing their artifacts and their final outputs. Uh, all these quantitative and quant qualitative data are analyzed, first of all, with NVivo, uh, which allow, enables us to, to have a categorization of emerging themes 
that are being discussed, and then uh, SPSS uh, in order to be able to spot out relations among different variables. Um, and additional tools that we are planning to use include Ankong and Sketch Engine for textual and concordances analysis. Next. Uh, our activities uh, revolve around social entrepreneurship. Uh, we have created a social entrepreneurship scale. We have uh, been able to, to collect data about uh, the current needs of our students uh, in order to provide them with training, uh, consulting, mentoring. Uh, and in this analysis, uh, we have also um, confirm that there's a need a need for multimedia learning objects around linguistic and communicative aspects of entrepreneurship. And that's why we've decided to create a disseminate uh, an online repository that is going to be completely uh, free and accessible for everyone. Uh, and we have uh, several already several pills knowledge pills that uh, we'd like to, to share with you in this event. Among, all, among other pills, you'll be able to find uh, information about structuring and delivering a business pitch, intercultural communication skills, effective and persuasive communication, delivering a persuasive presentation, uh, improving your soft skills, uh, leading teams, and personal development. Uh, we, have, we, we, we are very, very honored to have experts on those uh, topics that are going to, to contribute and are already contributing with their talks uh, and with their pills as we call them, in order to, to provide uh, students, uh, lecturers, and anybody interested with all the information about uh, those topics and many more that are coming up. Next. Our expected outcomes include the assessment of the value of 3D virtual worlds within virtual exchange in facilitating the interpretation and analysis of facts and information in an effective way that enables participants to address social problems from a social entrepreneurial perspective in line with the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, we also want to look at the effectiveness, effectiveness sorry, of 3D virtual worlds within virtual exchange from different linguistic, cultural and professional perspectives. Uh, another of our goals is to determine the added value of 3D virtual worlds uh, um, in more specific terms. Uh, so for the mediation in the application, analysis, and discussion of sources to a set of key facts, especially from different social, cultural, and policy standpoints. And finally, we want to study the efficacy of 3D virtual worlds within virtual exchange in enabling cross-cultural dialogue and communication, linguistic understanding, and growth among participants through the co-construction of social entrepreneurial artifacts that are then going to be shared through the, the aforementioned platforms. Next. Um, now, about the Year3D project, this is a project that uh, has uh, grown uh, thanks to, well, to the pioneer, the first project that we had, which is YesLab. Uh, we have uh, managed to secure funding in a more ambitious way. So now we have the support of uh, uh, Valencia's regional government, Generalitat Valenciana, and that has enabled us to continue working, improving, and, and increasing the, the number of, uh, of students and and lecturers that we can actually provide with our services. And we're planning to create an entrepreneurial um, training center. Uh, so the YES Lab is going to, to expand and we're very happy and, and very proud that this is going to be possible. Uh, this project investigates the role of three-dimensional virtual reality in context of international virtual exchanges between university students of languages for specific purposes within the framework of the training processes of future profession professionals in the business world, and more specifically of social entrepreneurship based on the goals, sustainable development goals proposed by UNESCO. Next, please. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Janita Valenciana, the Consejo de Educación from, um, from this uh, regional government in, in Valencia for funding this project. Next. And uh, now, uh, Kiria Finardi, who's also our partner, our partner in the YesLab project, is going to tell us about uh, a project that had just started, uh, the FAPES Universal Project. So, Kiria, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. And as Anna said, the Yes3D uh, grew um, uh, 
of the YES uh, Lab um, uh, project. And we are very happy to see other connections and sprouts coming from this project, one of which is the FAPES Universal project, which was proposed in Brazil with my um, uh, students and colleagues uh, of the Federal University of Espírito Santo with the support of FAPES, the um, agency that supports research in the state of Espírito Santo where the university office is uh, located. Next, please. So uh, this project, the FAPES Universal, links to the YES3D project and um, looks focuses on the Sustainable Development Goal uh, 4.7, which challenges the university to integrate education for global citizenship as a way to provide learning opportunities for the development of global, national, and local, what we call global uh, citizenship. Um, the objective uh, is, like I said, to promote this global education, in a, especially in a post-COVID context. Uh, and I think in this case, in this sense, uh, the yes 3 d uh, uh, project and FAPIS are very timely and very relevant for the context in which we are living. Um, so we are aiming to use technology to place, in this case, in the FAPIS project, to place small and medium-sized companies from the state of Spirito Santo, especially those outside the capital city. Um, with foreign students and also professors and researchers in an interconnected uh, relationships uh, through virtual uh, exchange uh, and other uh, ways to collaborate in the development of teaching, research, extension, internationalization and uh, innovation uh, in the state in an integrated way with the communities, in this case represented by the small and medium-sized companies in the state um, uh, involved. More specifically, the project aims to integrate the actions of teaching, research and extension and also internationalization of UFIS, the Federal University of Espírito Santo, in the development of this global citizenship, acting in the exchange and also transfer of knowledge, innovation and technology at UFIS and with the internal and external community involved. Next, please. Uh, so how does this link to the YES 3D uh, project? Well, both are problem-based telecollaborative tele simulations uh, um, uh, projects that aim to involve professional uh, environments in virtual worlds, offering a fertile ground to overcome global and physical barriers, meeting the needs of students and citizens of the 21st century, and especially after uh, and in the context of the pandemic in which we're living. So the project aims to integrate these actions, teaching research, extension, internationalization, and innovation. There's a, a problem here with the, the text of UFIS, the Federal University of Espírito Santo, and also Valencia linking to the Yes 3 d uh, project uh, with the community of small and medium-sized companies uh, in the state of Espírito Santo to assist their process of internationalization, thus promoting the transfer of knowledge and internationalization innovation of research uh, in the university and uh, in the state of Espírito Santo. Next, please. So, uh, as I said, this, these two projects are very timely because they were uh, uh, proposed uh, during the pandemic. Uh, and when we are living uh, this uh, urgent need for online training, especially uh, in those cases, uh, as Anna said, where the practicum courses and the training has been suspended because of the di disruptions caused by the pandemic. And so virtual, uh, the possibility to use uh, a virtual reality and uh, 3D to assist in this training is very uh, relevant in the moment. Um, and so um, uh, we also look at the potential of um, uh, virtual reality uh, in the moment when academic mobility has been suspended because of the, uh, uh, of the pandemic. Uh, and uh, uh, in many cases, substituted, replaced by virtual mobility, which is accessible for all, whereas academic mobility was available only for a few. And also the possibility of looking at simulations of professional virtual environments uh, in a YES 3D virtual exchange as a tool in the case of UFIS to internationalize not only the universities, but the academic uh, community and the community around the university University represented by the small and medium-sized uh, companies. So in this sense, virtual mobility has been increasingly adopted to replace, like I said, and complement this physical mobility, providing potential benefits um, uh, similar to those derived from academic um, uh, or professional exchange abroad. And uh, we are interested in looking at how um, this relates to the process of internationalization and the pursuit of the um, SDG 4.7 uh, in the case of UFIS. Next, please. So um, 
how does the FAPIS project and virtual uh, exchange uh, uh, relate or meet? So to solve the problems of interpersonal and intercultural communication, added to simulations of professional environments and social entrepreneurship in three-dimensional uh, virtual worlds, we aim to help the internationalization of the university extension outreach and also the expansion of the teaching research extension, uh, internationalization and innovation actions of the university to the interior. Uh, state of the Espiritu Santo, like I said, to these small and medium-sized companies not located in the capital, where most have access to uh, the knowledge produced at the Federal University. Next, please. So these are our uh, references. Next, please. This is going to be available for you. And Anna and I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we would like to thank again all the, the sponsors that made the uh, um, uh, that made possible this event that uh, uh, we are organizing, and also invite you again to attend the two uh, uh, the two days uh, with the two different activities and seminars we're going to be uh, holding Monday and Tuesday, November eighth and 9th. And would you like to uh, close, please? Um, you're muted, Anna. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I would like to encourage everyone to participate in the event. So on the 8th of November, we, we hope to see you live so that we can interact uh, with you and hear your comments and questions. And then of, on November the 9th, because of the time differences of all the countries involved in the, in the webinar, we decided to hold the event asynchronously, but we still hope that you watch all the videos and comment and email the authors if you have any questions or any suggestions for collaboration because we're always very very happy and looking forward to expanding our network bye bye